Hi, my name is Laura Stegner. I am a PhD student at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and today I will be presenting work that I did with Bill Gay Mutlu titled Designing for Caregiving, Integrating Robotic Assistance in Senior Living Communities. The population is aging globally, and the number of caregivers required to care for this aging population is not keeping up with the demand. There has been a long-time vision for care robots to fill this gap by assisting with care for the elderly or disabled. Most of this work so far has focused on providing effective assistance to and creating a positive experience for the care recipients themselves. However, the care interaction with the robot is not really dyadic. We envision human caretakers will always be involved given the connections they build with care recipients and the social nature of care work. Robotic technology should support the existing practices and workflows of these caregivers. For the rest of the talk, I'll start by giving some background on senior living communities. Next, I'll explain our methods involving a field study. Then I'll touch upon our results, which consist of the six themes from our analysis. Finally, I'll discuss design implications that we take away from our results. We conducted our study at a senior living community. These facilities provide accommodation to aging individuals with a wide range of care needs. On one hand, we have independent living, where residents live in apartments complete with their own kitchen. They have a caregiver on site to assist with smaller tasks like medication management, showering, or getting dressed, but these residents live almost completely independently. On the other side of the spectrum is assisted living, which is for individuals who require significantly more care with activities such as using the toilet, transferring from a chair or bed, meal preparation, picking up items that have fallen to the floor, and so on. The residents in assisted living have their own private rooms but gather in community dining rooms for meal service. The facility we partnered with had a mix of independent and assisted living, allowing us to incorporate both into our work. To investigate how robots can integrate into caregiver workflows, we conducted a study at a senior living community using a mix of ethnographic and co-design methods. First, we conducted fly-on-the-wall observations to learn the natural context and workflow structure. During the observations, the researcher followed a caregiver around during their shift and took field notes. This experience was intended to reveal tacit knowledge that the caregivers would not necessarily think to mention during an interview. After all of the observations were completed, we conducted follow-up interviews with a co-design component. We first asked the caregivers about their views of their work and its challenges. Then we wanted to gather ideas about how a robot might assist with their work. Caregivers were given supplies to sketch what they would want a robot to look like. We used this sketch as a starting point to discuss what features the robot should have and what tasks it should be able to do. Finally, we presented the caregivers with images of existing robots and discussed what these robots could do to help them. These images served as visual prompts to see if different robots would spark different ideas about how robots could help. We worked with a total of seven caregivers at one facility, split between assisted and independent living, to conduct eight observation sessions and five interviews. All caregivers were female, which is typical of the caregiving industry. We combined the field notes and interview transcripts, then analyzed them with a thematic analysis that revealed six themes, which we split into two high-level categories. The first category is factors that shape caregiving, which includes caregiver workflows, resident needs and preferences, and communication. The second category is the desired role of the robot, which includes providing physical support, providing social support, and expectations of interaction modality. We discuss each theme in more detail next. First, we consider caregiver workflows. Caregivers in independent and assisted living both have scheduled care tasks to do. With independent living, the caregiver often has downtime in between helping residents with those scheduled tasks. In assisted living, on the other hand, the caregiver needs to balance their scheduled tasks with responding to unscheduled tasks residents need help with. Here we can see the caregiver starts to take care of the scheduled tasks, first helping the pink resident. Then while helping the orange resident, that resident has an unscheduled need that the caregiver also takes care of. Then the blue resident calls the caregiver for assistance, so the caregiver must leave the orange resident to help the blue resident, and so on. Despite the differences in task predictability, all caregivers emphasize the challenge of time management and the importance of responding quickly to call lights. Due to the range and abilities of residents, it is important for the caregivers to personalize their care for each one. Sometimes this personalization is based on physical ability, such as needing to speak extremely loudly to residents who are hard of hearing, while other times it is based on their personal preference, such as how they want their pillows arranged before bed. 
While medical needs are written down, much of this personalization is actually information that the caregivers learn over time from interacting with residents. The caregivers deal with two kinds of communication, with residents and with other caregivers. With residents, the caregiver takes additional steps to include the resident in the caregiving process. The caregiver asks permission to do tasks and informs the resident of what is being done to help protect that resident's autonomy and to give them a voice in their own care. With other caregivers, the primary means of communication is through an electronic charting system that tracks what care each resident receives. In independent living, only one caregiver was on duty at a time, so this was the only communication. However, with assisted living, many caregivers worked at once, so they would also stop to chat briefly with each other in passing. Our second category is the desired role of the robot. While we observed differences in the factors that shape caregiving between assisted and independent living, we did not find a difference in their expectations for the robot. First, the caregivers expressed the desire for highly capable robots to perform complex physical tasks. Here we see sketches from the co-design part of the interview. The caregivers all drew a humanoid robot with a mobile base and expressed it should have two arms so that it can do anything the caregivers themselves could do, from lifting residents to helping them bathe. They also expressed the robot should have advanced sensing capabilities, such as smell, taste, and touch, to better monitor and care for residents. The caregivers viewed their job as more than just the physical assistance they provide to residents in daily activities, emphasizing their role in providing mental and emotional support that residents need. They drew robots with features such as a heart and a smiling face, indicating the robot should not be too cold or industrious. However, considering the importance of the social support, the caregivers questioned whether a robot should provide it. Instead, they were more interested in a physical assistant to offload tasks to, allowing them to spend more time addressing the social needs of the residents. The caregivers wanted to control the robot directly, either verbally telling it what to do or planning tasks for the robot in advance with the control interface. They also felt the robot should be able to handle requests directly from the resident, but not without some supervision. In some situations, such as if the robot is delivering food to a resident requiring a special diet, then they felt the robot's work should be checked to ensure it is not going to harm the resident. Based on our results, we provide design implications that consider how care robots can fit into the existing workflows of caregivers. Caregivers express the need for highly capable care robots that need to operate in variable, complex environments. Current robots have a long way to go, but advancing capabilities make the vision of care robots much more within reach. First, to support unpredictable caregiver workflows and provide physical support to residents, care robots must have multiple capabilities such as the ability to lift residents, manipulating items, and proactive monitoring. From our findings on interaction expectations, we recommend that care robots must also fit into a control hierarchy where the robot relies on the caregiver to address conflicts between the caregiver and resident desires. The robot should have a supporting role instead of making decisions that could potentially harm residents. Second, we found that caregivers learn and consider resident needs and preferences when they provide care beyond what is written in their medical records. To allow care robots to effectively adapt to resident capabilities, caregivers need to be able to express their domain knowledge of resident needs and preferences to the robot, and robots should also adapt over time to input from caregivers and interactions with the residents. The caregiver should therefore be able to assign tasks to the robot through an end-user programming interface, and the robot should take feedback from the residents and caregivers to automatically adapt over time. The addition of care robots creates a triadic interaction involving the caregiver, the resident, and the robot. Both the resident and caregiver are stakeholders who need to be aware of the robot's status and intentions. So, to provide feedback to all of these stakeholders, the robots need to provide feedback to both the resident and the caregiver. The robot should communicate with the resident what action it will perform, and it should maintain a human-readable log for the caregivers to easily check the robot's status. Overall, we used ethnographic and co-design methods to explore design opportunities to support caregiving in senior living communities with robotic assistance. We found that caregivers work in highly variable, complex environments, so the integration of care robots into the existing workflows and practices is non-trivial. Based on our results, we present design implications suggesting how care robots can integrate into senior living communities. Overall, we call for more focus on the triadic interactions involving residents, care robots, and caregivers. Our work contributes to the growing body of work surrounding care robots, specifically by considering design opportunities from caregiver perspectives. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to answering your questions.